What's up guys, Chicks here from Chicks Tech Reviews. So what if I told you, you can get a big screen smartphone with quad cameras, NFC and Android version 10 for under £100? Well, today I have just that. This is the latest Elephone E10. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual and a SIM eject tool. You're also getting a screen protector and it's not tempered glass, it's those standard flimsy types. A USB Type-C cable, a 10 watt fast charging brick. You're also getting a clear silicon case to get you started. And this is what the case looks like. And here is the smartphone itself. So under the hood, you have the MediaTek Helio P22 Octa-Core CPU clocked at 2.2 GHz, combined with the PowerVR GE8320. You've got four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. Now you are looking at a generously large 6.5 inch IPS water drop display with a screen resolution of 1560 by 720 with 264 pixels per inch. So you have an HD plus display but I am pleased to see a bright display with decent colors and contrast. So with budget in mind, this smartphone is of course made from a plastic body. The design is quite nice. You have a choice from this two-tone green and blue color, which gives an almost metallic effect, or you can pick this up in black. Now in the hands, the smartphone feels quite nice. It is a large phone. And to give you an idea of the size, I will bring in the iPhone 11 Pro Max, which also has a 6.5 inch display. And this is just to give you guys an idea of the size. So whilst this is a big smartphone, to my surprise, it's actually quite slim at only 8.5 millimeters and weighs 193 grams. So fairly slim and light. Now if we look at the design, you can see a small chin at the bottom. We've got slight bezels going all the way around and you've got a teardrop or water drop camera. Furthermore, this smartphone has a generous 4000 milliamp hour battery which supports 10 watt fast charging and a fast charger brick is included in the box. Now you can play more or less any game from the Play Store. For example, Call of Duty Mobile plays super smooth and automatically benchmarks to medium graphical settings. And here is some gameplay. So now I'm playing Need for Speed No Limits and all the games I've tested so far including PUBG Mobile play nice and smooth and although there is only a single speaker in the smartphone the sound is actually surprisingly loud and clear so you're getting a pretty good quality single speaker in this smartphone. Now at the bottom of the smartphone we have a single speaker, USB Type-C port and a single microphone. On the side we have a volume rocker and a power button and the power button itself doubles up as a side fingerprint sensor. And the fingerprint sensor does a decent job at unlocking your smartphone. It's not the fastest I've seen but it's accurate and it does the job. Face unlock also works quite well at a similar speed. And on the other side we have a triple hybrid sim card tray which supports dual 4G nano sims and a dedicated micro SD card up to 256 gigs. And on the top of the smartphone, we have another microphone. Now let's talk about the cameras. On the back, we have a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main sensor, 13 megapixel wide angle lens, and a two megapixel depth sensor, along with a five megapixel macro lens. And you are able to shoot a maximum video resolution of 1080p with the rear camera. And on the front, we have a 13 megapixel selfie camera, which is capable of shooting 720p video. Now let's go through the camera menus. So you've got video, beauty, picture, portrait mode, and extras. And in extras, you've got filters, bokeh, pro, sticker, night, and 48 megapixel mode. We've got 48 megapixel mode, so that is your 48 megapixel camera. Now in this mode, the only tweak you have is to turn flash on and off. So quick shot with the 48 megapixel lens. Here we go. Okay, go back to extras. Let's check out the bokeh effect. So that's an example of bokeh mode. So when you're in picture mode, you're taking the maximum of 12 megapixel photos. You can switch on HDR and AI. 
So that's a 12 megapixel shot right there. If you want to access the wide angle lens, you simply tap this button over here and you are now in the wide angle mode. If we take a shot and if you want to jump straight into macro lens and we are now in macro mode and I'm just thinking what I can take a picture of my iPhone 11 case. So that's a close up of the leather part of my iPhone case. Now in video mode, you only have the option to shoot with the main sensor. You can't switch sensors, so you can only use the main sensor for recording video with the rear camera and it's 1080p at 30 frames per second. And when testing the same outdoors, that's 1080p video at 30 frames per second, there appears to be no option for image stabilization. And while I was outside, I decided to take a few photos. Now the first one is a 48 megapixel shot, second is a 12 megapixel, third is the wide angle lens, and finally we have a few macro shots. Now let's talk about the battery life. Now I did run my real time battery drain test where I follow a series of tasks which actually relate to a real time usage of an average user. And here are the results. So starting with a full 100% battery and screen brightness set to medium. So I first watched five hours of YouTube and the battery dropped from 100 to 64%. Thereafter, I used Waze GPS navigation for 30 minutes and that dropped the battery a further 4% down to 60%. I then used the camera app and recorded 30 minutes of 1080p video and that took the battery further down to 50%. I then browsed the web using Google Chrome for one hour and that took the battery level down to 44%. Thereafter, one hour of WhatsApp video calling and the battery was then 34% and finally two hours of PUBG gaming and the battery finally dropped right down to 4%. So I achieved a total on-screen time of 10 hours and 50 minutes. And with the included USB brick, it took four hours to fully charge this phone from zero back to 100%. Now DRM info shows Google Widevine level three. And here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds, graphics, and other system related info. And this smartphone was able to achieve near enough my broadband's top speed, which is 60 megabits per second and 18 megabits per second upload. And the internal disk speeds were actually pretty good. Read and write speeds of 214 megabytes per second. Now, I also tested out the internal GPS, switching off both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth scanning to make sure the internal GPS actually functions. And it took around 30 seconds to obtain a fix and do bear in mind this is an indoor GPS test and I can confirm that the GPS is working as it should. Now one issue I did find is Netflix was not available to download from the Google Play Store nor was Disney Plus but I was able to download both from the Aptoid Store and I can confirm that Netflix streams at a maximum resolution of 540p. One fifth of all the freshwater fish caught by people worldwide comes from this one river system. So that brings us to our benchmarks beginning with Geekbench multi-score of 803 and in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved a total score of 96k. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top performing smartphone chart for 2020 showing you the latest smartphones and seeing how they compare with each other and as you can see the brand new Elephone E10 has taken position 42 at the bottom of this chart with a benchmark score of 96k. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was my quick test of the Elephone E10. So this is a budget smartphone. The performance, build quality and features all prove the same. But what stands out for me is that large 6.5 inch water drop display. It's fairly slim and light. Moreover, Android version 10 is very smooth in operation. Now whilst this is not stock Android, at least you don't get any bloatware apps included with this phone. Now the quad rear cameras can take decent enough photos in good lighting situations, but not so great video quality. But for 98 pounds, this surely has to be the cheapest big screen smartphone we have seen so far in 2020. And for the price you're paying, 
you're definitely getting your money's worth. So the Elephone E10, bang for your buck device. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this smartphone. Is this something you can see yourself using? And with that being said, I'll leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.